Hey everyone, my name is Patchworker and welcome to this fourth and final episode of my Mr. Bill Remixes series. So in this video I'm gonna break down my remix of Mr. Bill's track that he created flipping one sample with four different producers as part of a challenge by another YouTuber called Andrew Huang. Long story short, I went on Mr. Bill's website where you can subscribe and get access to a whole bunch of project files, including the one that he did in the context of this challenge. And I used some of the elements to build a track of my own. So I'm just going to explain what I did and uh, hopefully you'll find a few things interesting. Let's start with the intro. It sounds like this. So, um, the first and obvious thing is the piano, and I recommend, if you're looking for a soft and sort of mellow sounding piano, I really recommend you check Spitfire Labs. Uh, it looks like this. You can have access to a whole bunch of different sounds. I only have two because that's the only two I use, the soft piano and the whirly. They have a whole bunch of free resources on their website in, on Spitfire Audio. If you download Labs, you have access to all of these, and the soft piano just sounds awesome. So yeah, I, uh, I used this and I created a sort of melody that I thought just leaded nice into the track. Then we also have those two heavy basses that hit. Basically, uh, as often in my basses patch, I start with operator. I just have one sine wave and some noise oscillator here. And then I just have a whole bunch of effects on it. If I remove the effects, they sound like this. So here you can see that the noise oscillator really comes out, especially when you put a filter on and you change this little thing here to OSR, then you can change the filter drive to add some extra distortion, also the drive here. Without them, they sound like this. And with them. So the sound is already pretty nasty by itself, but then I just added a bunch of compression, some OTT, EQ, and a filter to give it a bit of movement to create a sort of neuro bass. With this in mind, let's move on to the first drop. It sounds like this. Uh, let's start here by the bottom with the Vox section. So this comes from the very original thing that I talked about earlier where Mr. Bill flipped another song and this was part of the song so I used it in mine as well. I just added a bit of effects on it, I added some uh, EQ, um, some reverb but nothing too crazy just to remind the listener that this is where the track originally comes from. On top of all of this, I have a few piano hits, but nothing too crazy, and I have some pads. They sound like this. And the way I created these is by doing a separate sound design session in which I used a thing called pole stretch. Uh, I can show it to you here. This is a free VSC that you can get on the internet and uh, Pulse Stretch basically works as a big stretcher. It stretches everything to the limit. So you can uh, change a whole bunch of parameters, the stretch amount, and it makes everything very dreamy and it creates very interesting sounds uh, from different things. So you can just load a file here and then you mess around with the, um, with the different settings and you get very interesting textures, uh, for example, like these. So you can hear that this comes from one humming of the original song, but I could just stretch it extremely with the help of Paul Stretch. And so by using these new sounds, I could create pads. And these act as a very nice background layer. Without them, the drop sounds pretty weak. But with them, it really changes the thing. 
Now let's move on to the bass section. It's a bit messy in there. So this bass group sounds like this. So what I did to create these sounds was first to create a few patches as I showed before with Operator or with Serum, but then I also created very less conventional patches. If I play them to you, they sound like shit. They sound like this. And so what I did to create these sounds is basically throw all the audio effects I could find in my hard drive after a saw wave, a sine wave, and just messing around on the spot with a MIDI controller and completely at random changing the parameters of different uh, audio plugins. So I created this huge thing, as I often do, and then I just cut the things that sound nice and added a bit of a filtering on top so that it doesn't sound too harsh to create this. So that's pretty much it for the first drop. Let's now move on to the bridge. It sounds like this. So here again, we have the piano that we talked about before. Uh, however, this riff, I have no skills in piano whatsoever. So this riff here... was created with the help of these few chords here, that are very simple chords, and the Midivolve Max for Live device. This thing allows you to create new riffs for pretty much whatever chord you're gonna feed it to. So here you just put it on riff mode, you put the scale in the right scale, so now it's in scale, and then you just let it do its thing. So it creates riffs for you. They sound arguably really artificial, but then they allowed me to throw them in a huge MIDI file. This is all MIDI Evolve generated stuff. And then I used this as an inspiration and I used bits of it to come up with this specific riff here. And I wouldn't have been able to do it on my own, but because MIDI Evolve allows you to create things that are in key, you can then just much more easily pick up little passages that you like and then paste them in one big MIDI file so that you create a riff that you didn't really compose yourself. So that's it for the piano. Um, you could hear some interesting sounds in this section. These things here uh, are created with the help of Portal, one of my uh, favorite plugins at the moment. I'm sure you've heard of it already if you watched the previous videos. Portal is... Um, a granular audio effect, to put it simply, and it allows you to do crazy manipulations. And I use this to create these kind of uh, sound files. So I started with a very simple drum loop and then run it through Portal and just took the best parts out of it. And then the way I created the sort of stereo spectrum is by playing those two samples that are the same samples, but with a tiny, tiny bit of delay. I have about, I guess, four milliseconds of delay, maybe a bit more. But then you just pan the two tracks completely to the left and completely to the right, and then you have something that feels really stereo. I know this technique has some downsides, but for the purpose of this track, it just did the trick. Now we can move on to the second drop of the track. It sounds like this. So all of those synth hits were not created with a synth. They were again created with the use of Portal, uh, the plugin that I keep rambling about. If I unfreeze this track, you will see that again this comes from a huge sound design file. And for this specific sound design session, I took the entire original track by Mr. Bill and made it run through Portal messed around with a few presets to create those kind of noises. Most of it is not good, but you can find little snippets that are really, really nice sounding. I mixed in some vocal samples. And from the second half of the drop onwards, I added some more interesting effects to fill up some gaps to make it a bit more interesting to listen to. 
typically this here. But this creates some variation throughout the drop, which I think is really important. My favorite fill of, I think, the whole EP is this one here. Let's, uh, let's hear it a bit before. And so this sound here was again made by taking this time the last drop of the track that we're going to see afterwards and running it itself through Portal to create even crazier sounds. So yeah, I uh, really liked it and I'm glad I could use it in the context. This is pretty much all there is to the second drop. So I won't go into too much detail in the bridge, I'll just go straight to the third drop, which sounds like this. And there are two things that I think are most interesting here. The first one happens again in the vocal section. Uh, you can hear them here. And again, I just had a sound design in which I ran only the vocals in Portal to create these kind of sounds. And then I just chopped them up in ways that were musically pleasing. And the second interesting thing happens here in these chords. So the chords themselves are pretty simple. I just took them from the original track and modified them a tiny bit. But what's interesting happens here. As you can see in this patch, I have four instances of the Spitfire Labs with the soft piano uh, in them. Each of them are panned a tiny bit to the left or the right. And in each of them, there is an arpeggiator that triggers a random note with a swing. So they all play different notes at the same time. And so this creates for a sort of more full sound, as if plenty of pianos were playing random things at the same time. So I also added a bit of EQing and some delay afterwards. But really the fact that there are four instances of this piano playing different notes but at the same time makes the whole thing a bit more fuller. So there you go, I think this concludes what I believe are the most interesting things about my remix of Mr. Bill's track. I hope you found some of those tricks insightful and perhaps useful in your own productions. This concludes the walkthrough of the last track of my EP called the Mr. Bill Remixes. So yeah, my name is Patchworker and I hope you enjoyed listening.